and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton, and today we're going to take a look at one of Hampton's neighborhoods. And Hampton has a lot of special and wonderful neighborhoods, um, but we have to say Aberdeen is one of the most special and most unique. My guests are Claude Van, who's the current president of the Neighborhood Association, and Margaret Wilson, who's the president of the foundation that does some nonprofit work in that area. So I don't even know where to start, but Ms. Wilson, let's start with you. You were born in Aberdeen. In Aberdeen. Yes. Uh, it's there been there 77 years, and I was born 76 years ago. <laughs> so I guess I've been part of the beginning. What? Um, tell us a little bit about how that neighborhood was founded, designed, built. I mean, it's it's got a very special story. Right. Aberdeen was. Uh, built in 1934 with a grant that was given to Hampton University or Hampton Institute at the time right. for $245,000. Uh, it became the second resettlement uh, community in the country, but it was used as the model resettlement community. The first family moved Now, what's a resettlement <coughs> community? I'm not sure it's everybody's understands A resettlement understands is when they were bringing people in who had low incomes into a better a uh, better community, a better housing, better neighborhood. And most of them um, were working in certain areas, you know. But a lot of them were farms. But they needed help getting the market, you know, to keep the farms up. That's what a resettlement, bringing people together to, in a, to live in a better neighborhood. And a lot of the reason, I mean, this was is especially an African-American community, Absolutely. and a lot of the reasons that they couldn't live in better communities wasn't always because they couldn't afford it, it's because they weren't allowed. There right. were a lot of covenants, a okay. lot of segregation in those days, and uh, they didn't have access. A lot no. of people in the day didn't have access to and, decent housing. And Aberdeen was a black community, was built by blacks for blacks with a black architect. Which is really unusual right. at the time. And, and, I mean, the things, wow. and what's in it, and that's why I like people to come see the tour to visit with us, because they had some things in those houses that you would not have known for a black family in 1934. We had indoor plumbing, indoor heat, and hardwood floors, which they still have. Mm. They are, um, and so what, what a typical Aberdeen home looks like, because they were all built at the same time, designed at the same time. Describe for us, you know, some of the features of the house. And I mean, it's brick, right, on the outside? It's brick outside and um, inside. There were three rooms, four rooms, or five rooms. And I didn't say bedrooms. I said rooms, okay? Uh, three room was two bedrooms and a great room. Four rooms was... Two bedrooms, a living room, and a great room. A five room was three bedrooms with a living room and a great room. And I'm not sure people know what a great room is, but it's a combination room. Okay. That served as a kitchen or a living room and a dining room. So that and it all they all had uh, garages, they all had porches. Boy, garages <coughs> weren't probably all that common then, were they? Yep. They all had a garage. And since your name isn't just Aberdeen, it's Aberdeen Gardens. They also all had gardens. Or all space for had gardens. gardens. That was the reason. And everyone grew their own, you know, had a garden to grow crops. And what they did was um, they grew crops and sold it and put it in the co op. But they didn't grow the same thing. Everyone, there was different. I could grow potatoes, someone next door would grow mm -hmm. cabbage, someone else would do this. So we had a variety of food all year round. And it was in the co-op that we had at the time. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, Claude, your family, you're, you're third. <laughs> yes, I'm the third. You're Claude the third, yeah. and, and they've all lived there. I, yes, you're, at some point in time. You've been a fabric mm -hmm. of that community as well. Yeah. What defines it? I mean, really, there aren't that many places where people have stayed for three generations. Well, I, I think a lot has to do with the pride that was instilled uh, I look back to my grandfather and how he so meticulously took care of his lawn and uh, how he really respected the community. And as my dad used to say, everyone had 158 sets of parents. <laughs> they got paddled by anyone along the way. So there was a lot of pride in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, not as much now as it was then, Absolutely. but uh, in a lot of case, cases, the ownership uh, this was their first uh, purchase of a piece of property. 
So they w valued it like it was their first automobile, mm -hmm. first whatever. Right. And, and they, they took pride to take care of it and keep the community up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's what Margaret and I have uh, dwelled on so hard is to make sure that we keep it intact like it was uh, back in the day when the originated uh, settlers or original residents came into the community. Yeah. Now, there's been, I mean, I'll say you've been there for three generations, but in truth, you left for a while. You joined the military, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of other people did, too. I mean, people moved out, but a lot of y'all came back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we still have families, uh, people in the descendants, who live in the original homes. And we can, name, we can name several families who are still there. Now, I don't live there, but some folks don't realize it because I'm there probably <laughs> every day. Um, my family was the first family. My grandparents were the first family to move into Aberdeen. So I feel like it, I own part of it. it. It's my lifestyle. And even though I don't live physically there, I'm there uh, at least four or five times a week trying to make sure that Aberdeen is never forgotten. And one of the struggles we're having is young people or people to come along to tell the story. And I'm afraid that once this generation or a few other people leave, we're not going to be able to have anyone who's going to be able to tell the story about Aberdeen and how unique it is. We're still a viable community. And out of all the communities that I've spoken to over the last month, there are 93 resettlement communities, by the way, in the country. In the country, okay. And, I, and we, yours was the second. Ours was and the so second. we're a model for a lot right, of the Right, for the second followed. black one. Reset, and okay. there were 11 other uh, black communities. Out of the other black, there were farms. We're the only viable one left. We were on the urban one. But as I look across the country and speak to those people, they're not there anymore. But we're still here, and we work hard in maintaining our history. We maintain uh, taking care of the people in the neighborhood. We are, these are the things we do on a daily basis, and a lot of the other communities are not doing the same. Well, do you see a change? I mean, it is hard to, um, to keep things alive when you've got changes in ownership and, you know, you left and joined the military. A lot of people were gone for a period of time, came back. Some of the houses aren't owned by the occupants anymore. You've got some that are rental properties and some that are, I mean, the families, the original families are probably renting some of them, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I think that uh, uh, as we go through the iterations in, in the families uh, <clears throat> are losing sight, uh, they get divided. Uh, many of them have departed and then not come back. And they can't touch or feel or feel the spirit that we have in the community today. I think if they could come back and reunite uh, and see how vibrant the community is, they would want to get involved. I have a cousin in Delaware who makes it a point to be down here every de uh, February for mm -hmm. our Black History Month mm -hmm. because she lived in the community and thought it was so special as, as a child. And she's made donations to keeping the place up and things of that nature. So you do have those that are, are still involved in the community uh, who lived there many years ago. And, and I just look around the city of Hampton of some of the residents who uh, lived in Aberdeen from Judge Taylor to uh, former Vice Mayor um, Paige Washington and and uh, even our our current mayor and, and uh, former Spencer Turner lived in mm -hmm. Aberdeen. So we've had a number of people who still are connected to the community and uh, we continue to push it forward. We just have to work a little harder because we don't have as many as we have in the past. Mm -hmm. So who, who lives there now? Like describe, is there a typical, you know, is it a young family, kind of a starter home there now? There's a lot of older people. Is it a real mixed neighborhood? <laughs> well, I have an aunt who lives on uh, Lewis Road who's about 95 or 96, so mm -hmm. she's still there. Uh, then I look uh, on the corner of Langston and, and Lewis, uh, the Fords. Uh, uh, we lost him a couple years ago, but the son is still uh, there. Still there. And then uh, I go down the street and I see Almontine Jackson, whose uh, husband used, grew up in Aberdeen, 
uh, and she's still there. And uh, the Gillises are on that street. So I see a lot of people, uh, descendants, uh, Cliff Jordan uh, stayed across from my grandparents. And uh, uh, the son married a young lady and she's still in the house today. Uh, so, and Gary Johnson all the way on the other end of uh, Langston Boulevard is still there. Grew up in the community, parents were there, the whole nine yards. So there are a lot of old timers still in the community, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we have more uh, renters that don't really know the history. Uh, and I think that's what we, we want to convey to them that you live somewhere special and, and you need to take pride in it because there, there are not many Aberdeens out there, and uh, certainly the story is just wonderful. Well, and so even people who don't appreciate the community ought to at least appreciate the homes because they are some sturdy, well-built houses. When I look back during the recession, and you know my neighborhood lost 10, 12 percent in value in one year alone, and I was charting that Aberdeen didn't lose. Aberdeen okay. held value. They aren't the most expensive houses in the world, but they were solid. Like, well, um, I can tell you why. Nobody sells them. <laughs> Y'all just hand them down well, for well, one Well, one of the things, the before net. I tell you why is that way, uh, my aunt recently died. She was married to my uncle. She had been in that house for 62 years. She was the first, she was the secretary to her, the first and only manager we ever had, Mr. Walker. She refused to leave. You know, and she wanted to be there until she passed away. So that's the pride and feel that people have. But they don't, aren't destroyed because, you know, back then, you don't think those people knew how to build homes. The houses are double bricked. So if there's a fire, which Chloe can attest to, it burns inside, but not outside. Mm -hmm. And that's why those houses are still there. They were solidly built. Yeah. I just had a note, uh, and she said her aunt refused to leave. My dad made a statement at city council one time that if he died and went to heaven and St. Peter says we're filled up, uh, we can't take you right now. He said, send me back down to Aberdeen because I know what I got down there. So uh, that was one of his prolific statements that he made, and he stuck by it. Uh, he really loved the community and what it was all about. And uh, I can see him patrolling the area much like a soldier <laughs> patrols the perimeter. Uh, that's what he did every day. Mm -hmm. That was his job, <laughs> and uh, I think he got immense pride uh, in doing it. And I remember when Aberdeen won uh, the Neighborhood of the Year, we were traveling uh, in Georgia, and uh, Roosevelt Wilson had called him on my cell phone because Dad didn't believe in cell phones. Yeah. Uh, he said uh, Booker T didn't have one, so he didn't need one. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and he told him that we had won the Neighborhood of the Year and uh, very happy. Uh, I mean, he was just elated uh, uh, about that news because that was his community. And people say he was the unelected mayor of Aberdeen uh, because that was, was his pride and joy. Yeah. There are lots of things we're doing to maintain the value of the name, okay? We, we, um, we give an assistance award every year to a graduating student, high school student. Um, we do essays, wanting kids to know where they come from. Even the children who live in Aberdeen don't have a clue about being unique. And as I just mentioned to you, uh, the reason why I know about the 93 other communities, we're in the process of proposing to do a resettlement conference here. Oh, and wow. that would bring a lot of people to Hampton. It wouldn't just be for us, but it would do a lot for the city of Hampton also. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what we want to keep the ties to that. We take care of the school and well, so many things. Say. It's we not do. just your history. You, your neighborhood has a, has, is active in building the current community, not just celebrating the past, but working with the kids at the school. Yeah, um, we, we give uh, underwear and hats and things, uh, warm things during the winter time to the schools. We buy school supplies. Anything the school might need, all they have to do is ask. And we take care of it. We try to add to the, to the uh, school system. Uh, we take care of the seniors in the neighborhood. Um, we, we have elders. 
and we make sure that they have food. It's those kind of things, and we do the uh, food bank that Clark can tell you a little bit more about the food bank. We do once a month. Uh, yeah. We, we've been working in conjunction with uh, Ms. Young over at Aberdeen Elementary School and Bob Smith, who's with the Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity and Achievable Dreams, to do the mobile food pantry uh, each month. And it's more or less a bridge to help people get to the first of the month that might have run out of food. Oh, right. And uh, last month we serviced 178 families, and it was just a phenomenal uh uh, thing and, and you know Bob Smith and Miss Young have just been great advocates for us. Uh, I think one of the the great achievements that we had in 2015 uh, was the fact that our community was recognized for its community service to Lindsay Middle School, mm -hmm. where we did some painting in conjunction with the Air Force and uh, just spruced up the place. Uh, we did some landscaping and put timbers down and. Uh, mulch, and uh, we we just made it look appeal the appeal when the kids came back for school, mm -hmm. and uh, I as I drive by it every day, uh, I think about that hot sweltering August day <laughs> that we were out there painting those poles and wishing we would hurry up and get this done. But once it got done, it was. Uh, uh, a, a great joy, and we won an award for it for right. uh, having the uh, best project in the city of Hampton by a community. So we're also uh, yeah. doing the school at Aberdeen. They're painting the halls. Yeah. That's another. That's the project for right now. Is help to paint the halls and and help them in you know to bring to spruce their school up. So it's not just one thing. I mean, we do several other things to. We that, have a museum. There, I can't think of another. I could be wrong, but I'm, my, my brain is running. Is there another neighborhood with a museum? No. I, I don't yeah. think so. No. And we keep that going, um, and we do tours in there. It's by appointment. They can call, and they can get the history, and I take them through. An, it's an original home with original furniture. As a matter of fact, we are being... I bet uh, you know whose house it was. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. I know whose home it was, too. Um, the... <laughs> You made me forget. <laughs> All sorry. of a sudden, I just lost my name. Yeah. Uh, the person who lived there, and no one knew this until I came back, the female who lived in that house was my grandfather's sister. Wow. And they didn't know that, but they had lived there. Um, Maurice, their daughter, they had one child. Uh, and they lived in the house until they all passed away. And their children, there's only one child left now, and she lives in Oklahoma. But the house was in disarray since everyone had died. So what they did, the city and the state gave it to Aberdeen to use as a museum. And it is an original property with original furniture. And someone uh, just called to give us um, um, a bedroom set an original bedroom set from when they first moved in. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, there's also a historic graveyard, a historic family cemetery talk about yeah. um, behind Aberdeen. Yeah, uh, well, there is the Tucker uh, uh, Family Cemetery, which is located in East Aberdeen, and we believe the remains of the, uh, the first African-American born in this country is buried out there. I was just out there just uh, Tuesday, and uh, they're doing some cleaning up. And we're getting ready for the 2019 celebration. Mm -hmm. And we hope to bring a lot of people to the city of Hampton and expose them to that kind of history. But I just want to interject a, a point about the museum is just yesterday we had our police academy uh, students uh, come through to get the history of Aberdeen as a part of working with the police department. And that's so important as we go forth that they have an understanding of what the history of Aberdeen is. So as they patrol the streets, uh, they know why people like Margaret and myself were so attuned. And uh, I think that they had a pretty good time out there yesterday. We joked and, and, and we, we dispensed some knowledge, some things that I think they won't forget and we won't forget them either. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's always a good time. Uh, Chief Salt has been very good about getting uh, his folks out to see us along with Lieutenant Keller. Uh, uh, we, we just uh, enjoy that so much. It's, it's a good treat for us also. 
One of the things we do, we try to do, uh, like the new superintendent of schools, we met, we had invited him out and sat with him, told him what we felt was needed for the school. We were very upset because he came just after they closed uh, Cesar Turan School. And one of the issues we mentioned was there were three schools that were closed in our community. That was not, didn't sit too well with us, but the schools were gone. But we try to stay in touch with the school board. And we have a very good relationship with uh, Dr. Smith. We've invited the Chief Salt out. So we do this so that people will know we're there and why we're there and why we want to keep up with this community. Okay. Well, you, you missed out on a great opportunity with our uh, political forum that we had uh, in April. And we had an old country breakfast cooked outdoors, and uh, it was phenomenal. Uh, it was a good breakfast, and uh, uh, we got some information that w was dispensed to the citizens, and I think that was uh, a great part of our civic responsibility mm -hmm. to do that. That's wonderful. And I will say, you guys have a lot of activities. Some that happen every, you know, during the jazz festival, you sure. usually do tours. You have a Heritage Day, you have Black History. I mean, there's, there's regular ongoing community things that are for your neighborhood, but mm -hmm. also some of them, you know, for the city. Yeah, I can give so. you dates, so if anyone's interested, they watch can all. Watch e-news or watch the community calendar <laughs> on right, Amazon.gov. That's right. what I'm going to say. It's, it's always I'm going to call from Miss Wilson, and she'll be telling me what to put on the calendar. <laughs> yeah, we, well, we have big things going on coming up. We, we need to wrap up, but what I was thinking is, you know, for each of our neighborhoods, there's an identity or a personality. And if I, as an outsider, were to look at Aberdeen, I would say it's about pride and history and community and taking care of each other and of the people around you, not just the people who live right in the neighborhood, but also political and civic engagement and being involved in the policies of your city and the policies of your school system. And so if someone is looking for a neighborhood that would foster that, this is the place to look. Absolutely. Now, it is hard to find a house for sale. I will tell you that because <laughs> I've watched the listings. Yeah. But you might be able to find one for rent. You might be able to call one of the two of you and sure. see if we can get an inside track. Absolutely. But it would be a neighborhood that would really nurture a family that is looking for civic involvement and civic engagement Absolutely. and yes. that old style community taking care of each other mm -hmm. and um, it's, it would be a great place for, for someone who was looking for it's that. It's a great starter place. Uh, uh, a lot of people want the brand new this and the brand new that. Well, the brand new is not always the best Absolutely. thing that you can get. Uh, as it you might have, be right away, but 10 years later, yeah. not so much. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and to your comment, uh, Aberdeen is sustained of a lot of hurricanes and uh, <laughs> foul weather and still standing, and we hope, uh, if the good Lord's willing, it'll stand another 77 70 years. Years. Yes. Yeah, so we, we're very in tune to it, and we're going to try to do all we can do to make sure that it's preserved for the next generation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you both so much for coming and talk to me about that. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And thank you. Aberdeen is one of those neighborhoods where even if you don't live in the neighborhood, you can visit the museum, you can make an appointment, you can go to a forum. Um, there's lots of reasons to stay plugged into this neighborhood, even if you don't live there. Thanks for watching.